Hey guys, I'm Brent Rose, tech writer and unlicensed plastic surgeon. Today we're going to be talking about wearables. A few weeks ago a study came out that kind of blew everybody's mind. This study was conducted by researchers at the Perlman School of Medicine and the Center for Health Incentives and Behavioral Economics at the University of Pennsylvania. Or as you probably know them, the PS of M and the C for HI and BE at UP. What this study claimed is that the phone in your pocket is just as, if not more accurate at tracking as the wearables on your wrist. A study like this is catnip for journalists. It spells the death of fitness trackers, and who wouldn't want fitness trackers to die. They're ugly, they're everywhere, and your friend who wears them won't shut up about it. The problem is, the science behind the study wasn't very good. They used devices that were two years old, and frankly, the conclusions it drew were really misleading. Let's break this down. Today we're going to be doing our own test with all new gadgets. We've got the Withings Pulse O2, the Basis Peak, the Jawbone Up Move, Google's Nexus 6, Apple's iPhone 6, the Garmin Phoenix 3, and Fitbit's Charge HR, all slowly drowning in a sea of arm hair. So the only thing that study looked at was the accuracy of step counting on a treadmill. We're gonna do the same test, but in real life, I'm gonna count 1,000 steps, and here I go. One, two, three, four, five. 98, 99, 300, one, two. 99, 1,000. Let's write everything down. Three, four, are you kidding? Wow. Okay, so let's see what we got here. The Nexus 6 came in at only 914 steps. The Withings Pulse, which was in my pocket, came in at 1047 steps. The Up Move was 1011 steps, as was the Basis Peak. The Phoenix on my wrist here was only off by seven steps. The iPhone came in at 995. The real surprise here is the Fitbit, which was on my wrist, came in at the most accurate, 1001 steps. So what we're seeing here is that there's not a huge amount of difference between whether or not it was on my wrist or in my pocket, whether it was a dedicated fitness tracker or whether it was a phone. They're all within a pretty small range. So this is kind of flying in the face of what the study is saying already. That said, let's see if we can trip up the wrist-worn trackers. So a lot of people think that certain activities will trigger false positives in the step counting. So to simulate that, we put all four wearable trackers on one wrist. We decided to do about five minutes of whittling. We chose whittling because it's a pretty good analog for some very common activities, such as peeling carrots, peeling potatoes, and yes, obviously, what you guys are all thinking, jicama. Holy shit, thought I did a lot of running just then. 540 false steps, 611, 618, 722 false steps. So that was actually pretty damning. These wrist-worn trackers were definitely subject to a lot of false positives. They thought I took, on average, 622 steps while I was just sitting here whittling. So that's really bad. But here's the thing. Steps counted is a really poor metric for measuring your fitness levels anyway. It doesn't know whether you're taking these steps quickly or slowly, whether you're walking or dancing, and obviously, whittling is a serious issue. And there's another problem. Phones and other accelerometer-based trackers are absolute garbage when it comes to tracking anything that doesn't involve steps. A much more useful metric for people is caloric burn. You want to know how many calories you're expending so you know how much you can eat. This is where the new breed of fitness trackers really start to set themselves apart. We're talking about the ones with built-in heart rate monitors, like the Fitbit Charge HR, the Basis Peak, the Moto 360 smartwatch, and even the forthcoming Apple Watch. Let me show you what we mean. Okay, so both the Fitbit and the Basis Peak are showing 74 beats per minute right now. Even if these phones and the accelerometer trackers thought that each crunch was a single step, obviously these are a lot harder than single steps. So 101, 99. So they know I'm working. These other ones have no idea what's going on. This is a pretty extreme example because I'm completely still and yet I'm working very hard. As far as the phones are concerned and the non-heart rate monitor activity trackers, I might as well be asleep sitting on a train somewhere. This one knows, however, my heart rate is already up at 100. This one says 98, 111, 113, 114 now, according to Fitbit. This one, again, no idea what's happening. Obviously, biking is probably the most popular non-walking form of exercise. What we're going to do is see how many calories I burned at the end of a 10-minute bike ride. Most of these monitors have no idea what I'm doing. The ones that have a heart rate monitor should show a higher caloric burn. Unfortunately, our two phones don't do caloric estimates, so they flunked out right away. Yoo-hoo! <sighs> All right, 
My heart's still around 140 beats per minute. I think it probably peaked around 148. Let's see what the calories are. So this is exactly what we expected. The Withings was way low at 54. The Garmin was low at 91. The Jawbone was pretty low at 163. But the Fitbit and the Basis were the two highest. 226 for the Fitbit and 243 for the Basis. And that makes a lot of sense because they were watching my heart rate and they could tell how hard I was working. Whereas these other ones were doing it just based on my motion. So what did we learn here today? While your phone is awesome in a lot of ways and it's less prone to false positives and step counting, step counting isn't really that important in the grand scheme of your overall health. The more important metric is caloric burn, and for that, you gotta have a heart rate monitor. So until your phone can monitor your vitals through your pants pocket, wearables aren't going anywhere. This study was conducted by researchers at a university, nope. So a few weeks ago, a study was published in the Journal of the Medical German, the Perlman School of Medicine, and the Center for the PS of M and the C. The PS of M, the PS of M and the C for, why is that so hard for me? It's my own line. Who wrote this shit?